Welcome back to Crazy Hillbilly Cooking Adventures. I'm Crazy Hillbilly. And I'm Uncle Bill. So what are we doing today? Uh, man, it's a cold, brisk fall morning, but for some reason, I got a hankering for some salsa, guacamole, maybe some pico. Mmm. Sounds like we might be doing some fajitas or tacos this evening for dinner if we're going to prep this up. Sounds good. So we're going to start off with a little pico de gallo. So with the pico, you need, we like to do a batch that's big enough for our families. We've got quite a few people that we feed. So we do four tomatoes, about half of a red onion, just because red onion's got great flavor, but it's not needed to be a ton of onion in it. We'll use fresh cilantro. We'll do, we'll squeeze half a lime in there and we'll do a little salt, uh, a little salt in there and a little pepper as well. So we're gonna get to prepping these ingredients and we will get back to you here in a moment. Y'all, what I'm about to be working with right here is cilantro. And out of all the ingredients, you know what jalapenos and onions and tomatoes are and how to dice them up yourself at home. Cilantro is a different thing. You have to make sure you get down here literally right to where the leaf starts. These are not good. They're good for cooking in broths and stuff. We'll give it some flavor. But as far as ingesting in sauces and stuff, there's no goodness to it at all. Just no flavor, just really briny. And then when you're doing your cilantro, just dice it up as fine as you want it. For the pico that we're about to do, we don't, we don't dice it that fine. Uh, side note about uh, cilantro about 50% of you out there do not like it don't worry it's not your fault it's your brain's fault 50% of the people in, in the US um, or I guess in the whole world um, their br brains detect cilantro as actually a poison or a toxin so your, br your brain tricks you into making it taste bitter perfumey or soapy for the other 50% our brains do not detect it as a poison or toxin then we get a nice savory citrusy flavor from it so if you don't like it, leave it out. It's not your fault. So now that we have our tomatoes, our cilantro, and our onions and jalapenos all chopped up into the bowl, we're gonna go with our lime juice. We're gonna cut this on. We're gonna start off with half. We think half could be plenty for this size batch, but uh, we'll taste it afterwards and see if it needs more. But just wanna really squeeze out uh, lime juice in there. And then uh, Mr. Uncle Bill here is going to give us a little salt and pepper. Yeah. Y'all, what we in general do is for every two tomatoes that you use, we do a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. So we've used four in this recipe. So we're going to get just 
literally two pinches of each of these, spread it around, and we're about to we're about to hand stir this out too. So, and this is obviously by taste. Um, if you want more or less salt, that's that's totally up to you. Absolutely. All mm. right. Well, as we do it as we do it in our family, we this is this is for us. So we want to just stir it in. You want the tomato juice, the cilantro. You want everything just to mix in. Let the juices get it. This is perfect for putting on your tacos or just on the chip. It's really good on baked fish as well. Oh yeah, you're absolutely right on that. All right, just a good stir in there. I'm gonna go wash my hands and let this man tell you about the rest. All right guys, now that we got it all mixed up, we're gonna taste it for seasoning real quick. Uh, we got these uh, tortilla chips that we get at our local grocery store. They're made fresh from our local grocery store instead of buying the big name brands. All right. Well, let's get a scoop in here and see what we got. Mm -hmm. I think we need another pinch of salt on, in ours here. And then... Um, and then once you get the seasonings right, this is best. After it's refrigerated for about 30 minutes at least, and then it's ready to serve. All right, my friends, we're back. Messing around making one of my favorite things. I love avocado. I eat it on sandwiches. We use it for all sorts of things, but traditionally it's used to make guacamole. And that is absolutely what we're going to do here. To make a good guacamole, you need a couple of ripe avocados. When you go to the store, grab them, push on them a little bit. If they've got a little give, they're ready. Most of the time they'll be this color. They won't be that deep green that they have uh, in the store. You'll need cilantro, just one little jalapeno. You don't want a ton of jalapeno in there, just a little bit to bring out flavor. Uh, we do about a half red onion, one tomato, salt, pepper, and that is it's a very simple recipe, but you don't need all the extra stuff to just make everything good. So we're gonna start prepping this out. First with an avocado. You see this? This is the weapon of choice for getting your avocado out. You take it, you run your knife in, just keep running it until you fill the pit inside of it. Once you've gone all the way around, literally it'll just split off. Uh, some people push the push it out. I usually just take a knife and stick it and it'll pull right out just like that. You take your spoon, make sure you have a bowl nearby. Take your spoon, take it right to the edge. You'll feel it. You can run the entire skin. And it'll scoop everything right out. Literally nothing, nothing left in there to deal with. So we'll take, I'm going to take the red onion first. Make sure you peel your onion. <laughs> you got to watch out. They fly around. <laughs> So you wanna you wanna take them, take your onions and your tomatoes. You want them diced fine. You definitely want to get a really good cut on them. Um, I'm going to mix it. We'll do probably about half of this half first. Uh, we'll mix it. We'll taste it, and we'll figure out how much more we need. This particular red onion, after tasting it in the uh, pico de gallo, it is a very strong onion, and. 
guacamole is not known for strong flavors. It's known for, it has a, has a, just a great rich flavor to it, but not, you don't want any part of it overpowering. No, Uncle Bill used to make this stuff uh, table side at uh, the Mexican restaurant he worked at. Yeah, there's been a lot of those in my <laughs> life. Not necessarily Mexican restaurants, but Mexican, uh, but restaurants in general. Actually, I wasn't a Mexican restaurant. It's a Tex-Mex restaurant. Tex-Mex. Well, you call it tomato, tomato, you know. <laughs> you call it what you want to. This young man used to come uh, sit and bother me at it, you know. So we'll start with that amount of onion. We'll go ahead and do one whole tomato. Well, almost. There, get that out of the way. And there's, however you feel comfortable dicing your tomatoes, that's completely up to you. Me, I've been cutting, uh, cutting my tomatoes this way forever. And it's just the way I'm comfortable getting a good dice to the size that I like. Gordon Ramsay would cringe. No, oh, I know it. <laughs> I know it. I mean, you can go, you can go the other way with it. If you even want to, you can take the top layer off and cut the whole tomato as a whole and do it. Like I said, it's up to you. The finished product's gonna still be a diced tomato of some sort. So I don't, the tomatoes, I like to leave a little larger than the onion, but really, really good that way. We have our jalapeno, uh, same way Crazy Hillbilly did it. You wanna take your end off, Cut it down the middle. Get rid of the. You don't. You don't want the seeds for this. The seeds. The seeds are entirely too spicy when you're doing dip style items. Yeah, uh, pico de gallo and guacamole are more of a. Uh, uh, I had it on my brain. I can't <laughs> So pico de gallo and guacamole are meant to be more of a refreshing type um, topper, not not necessarily all that spicy. That's where our salsa would come in. Our salsa would be a little more spicy when we make it. Absolutely. Crazy hillbilly, I think we're gonna have to get the knife sharpener out and get to hit these knives a little bit. Yeah, I think so. You get a little, you get a little dull. A little bit. With peppers, any peppers, if you're going to chop them up, you can take a slit right here and flatten it out so you're able to chop it up properly. You just have to cut it into the right sections. That way you're not trying to fight how round it is. It keeps you much safer in how you do things. And also, if your knife's a little bit duller like uh, Uncle Bill's is right now, if you turn the skin side up and the soft side down, you have a you get a better cut all the way through. Because the skin is what fights you. So if you cut through it first at the top, you get all the way through. Don't want to waste no jalapeno. We are jalapeno lovers around here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do these and we'll come back here in just a moment. All right. So I went ahead and prepped the rest of our avocados. 
right now we're going to go ahead and add some cilantro uh, if you watch the first part of this video it's pretty much going to be the same you want good good chunks of cilantro in here you don't want it too fine uh, when you're getting into finer using cilantro in a finer way you're doing that with uh, your salsas uh, if you do glazes I know a lot of people who like to do cilantro glazes um, that type of stuff you need to have it much finer but for this we want it to break down uh, so you have good flavor in cutting it you open up the leaf you can literally take the leaf rub on it smell it taste it you'll know how good your how good your plan is and this one's really good so we'll add this in. Then we're gonna take half a lime. Squeeze out as much of that juice as you can in here because it's actually what helps you break down the avocado. And it also keeps it from oxidizing and turning brown. Absolutely. So I'm gonna use the fine china here right here and right here to do the breakdown. You can use the big spoon to cut your avocados up a little bit, but when it comes time to really get into the mixing, um, you gotta have a little something finer. And I found that forks just work really well with it. Well, I can't wait to dig into that. I know it. Your avocado meat will be uh, be a little tough. You don't want it too soft. If it gets too soft, then you just come up with uh, the reason people think it looks like baby food. And that's not what you're really looking for when you're making guacamole. So you just get in here, take your time, break everything up. Find your bigger pieces of avocado. And you can use a potato masher or whatever you like for the finishing product. And it all depends on how much, uh, I guess how mashed you really want your, want your guacamole. I prefer mine a little thicker, but I know also people who add sour cream. It's all up to your taste. Some people like it smooth. I like it a little more chunky. So once you get your breakdown going, just stir and mash. You want to make sure you're mixing all those ingredients in. I wipe my tin off over here on the bottom. Yeah, you gotta. Once you get it to the right consistency, just stir it all in real good. And I believe I'm pretty close to the right consistency here. Like I said, we like a little chunk with ours. And then of course, it's just like the Pico. You'll have to go by, by taste to figure out if you need to add a little more or you know, or if it's right on the money. You didn't have to tell me twice. <laughs> You'll find out one thing for sure during uh, during our videos. Why uh, the crazy hillbilly over here uh, loves to eat. Look at that. All right. That's perfect right there, Uncle Bill. Mm -hmm. I don't need a thing. Mm -mm. I'm using the other side of the chip. I'm not double dipping. I'm using a whole nother chip because I'm hungry. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. That is so good. And also, unlike uh, the Pico, where you want to set it set for about 30 minutes, you want to make guacamole immediately before you want to serve it. 
Oh man. I'll have to say I'm proud of myself with that one. All right, guys, we're going to move on to the salsa here in just a second. Get back with you. Yep. Guys, I'm going to show you all the most simplest restaurant-style salsa ever. You got some onions. You got tomatoes, jalapenos, cilantro, salt, pepper, and cumin. That's all you really need for your to get started with here. Some people might add a little lime, but we got lime in our uh, guacamole and lime in our uh, pico de gallo. So we're gonna leave lime out of this one this time. But you got a food processor, a blender, one of these contraptions here, which you'll see how it works here in a second. Uh, we're gonna start off. We're gonna put a half of a half of a uh, onion. We use yellow onion this time. And four tomatoes. And again, on this, all we got to do is uh, kind of eight them up, drop them in. Hey, hillbilly, I ain't done yet. <laughs> They got, they got jokes over here. <laughs> this is really, uh, really quick. We're actually going to do this scene, try with uncut scene, so you just see how quick this is. I think we're going to make this work. We're going to have just the right amount. Now, I want this a little bit spicier than the uh, than our other products we made today. So we're gonna leave the seeds in. We're just gonna, gonna be using two smaller jalapenos. Because I couldn't find a big one. <laughs> you can find a big one, you know, one one big one, depending on how spicy you want it. You can put five or six of them if you want to. Same as the other, we're gonna cut that stem end off. Do a quick little chop there. Uh Use your judgment. Well, you ever you think it's going to blend in good? Uh, a little bit of extra steam in there. We'll cut that off with a dress Now, we'll go ahead with a good pinch of salt. Probably two pinches of salt. Good pinch of pepper. And for this size right here, I'm going to use about a tablespoon, or not a tablespoon, a teaspoon of cumin. Cumin has a great flavor, but a little goes a long ways. That, my friends, Justin Wilson says, is a teaspoon. Pop the top back on this rascal here. No electricity needed whatsoever. Know how to crank a chainsaw, a weed eater? You can operate this thing. I can get the lid on. <laughs> Onion in the hole. We are leaving this uncut, so <laughs> there we go. And then you just take this. check our consistency here I did break my wrist a few months ago and I do not have full strength in this left hand so it makes it difficult sometimes yeah there we go that's about what we're looking for for a good restaurant style don't worry after it sets for a little bit all the air bubbles will settle out the flavor will still be the same though we, we are not worried about the air bubbles at all. We are just worried about the salsa. Mm -mm. That's right on the money. All 
All right, guys, that concludes this episode of Crazy Hillbilly Cooking and Adventures. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, subscribing is very important for us right now, trying to get started. Y'all, yeah, we just hope you enjoy the videos. Uh, we enjoy making them. Also, a lot of people have never taught how to do different types of styles of cooking. I've learned half of mine from restaurant and half from family. If we can help and educate a little bit on some of the most common dishes in the world, and maybe some that won't be, <laughs> with really what we're here to do. Uh, just want to thank you once again for watching, and y'all have a blessed one. Y'all have a good day, and we're going to eat. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>